Before the Fellowship was the greatest story you've never heard. I'm Cameron. I'm Dan. I'm Greg. Join us as we read and react to The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien. Last time we began chapter 17. Men spread throughout much of Beleriand, enjoying friendship and allegiance with the Noldor and Sindar. King Thingol forbade them from entering Doriath. For the most part, they had allegiance and trust, but Morgoth began spreading division amongst them. Today, we conclude chapter 17, beginning on page 145 of the second edition. During this time, the Haladin remained in Thargelion and were content. But Morgoth, seeing that by lies and deceits he could not yet wholly estrange elves and men, was filled with wrath and endeavored to do men what hurt he could. Therefore he sent out an orc raid, and passing east it escaped the leaguer and came in stealth back over Ered Linden by the passes of the dwarf road and fell upon the Haladin in, in the southern woods of the land of Caranthir. Now the Haladin did not live under the rule of lords or many together, but each homestead was set apart and governed its own affairs, and they were slow to unite. But there was among them a man named Haldad, who was masterful and fearless, and he gathered all the brave men that he could find and retreated to the angle of land between Askar and Gelion. And in the utmost corner, he built a stockade across from water to water. And behind it, they led all the women and children that they could save. There they were besieged until their food was gone. Haldad had twin children, Haleth, his daughter, and Haldar, his son. And both were valiant in the defense. For Haleth was a woman of great heart and strength. But at last Haldad was slain in a sortie against the orcs. And Haldar, who rushed out to save his father's body from their butchery, was hewn down beside him. Then Haleth held the people together, though they were without hope. And some cast themselves into the rivers and were drowned. But seven days later, as the orcs made their at last assault, and had already broken through the stockade, there came suddenly a music of trumpets, and Caranthir, with his host, came down from the north and drove the orcs into the rivers. Then Caranthir looked kindly upon men, and did Haleth great honor, and he offered her recompense for her father and brother. And seeing over late what valor there was in the Adain, he said to her, If you will remove and dwell further north, there you shall have the friendship and protection of the Eldar, and free lands of your own. But Haleth was proud and unwilling to be guided or ruled, and most of the Haladin were of like mood. Therefore she thanked Caranthir, but answered, My mind is now set, Lord, to leave the shadow of the mountains and go west whither others of our kin have gone. When therefore the Haladin had gathered all whom they could find alive of their folk who had fled wild into the woods before the orcs, and had gleaned what remained of their goods in their burned homesteads, they took Haleth for their chief, and she led them at last to Estelad, and there dwelt for a time. But they remained a people apart, and were ever after known to elves and men as the people of Haleth. Haleth remained their chief while her days lasted, but she did not wed, and the headship afterwards passed to Haldan, son of Haldar, her brother. Soon, however, Haleth desired to move westward again, and though most of her people were against this counsel, she led them forth once more, and they went without help or guidance of the Eldar, and passing over Kelon and Eros, they journeyed in the perilous land between the mountains of terror and the girdle of Melian. That land was even not then not yet so evil as it after became, but it was no road for mortal men to take without aid, 
and Haleth only brought her people through it with hardship and loss, constraining them to go forward by the strength of her will. At last they crossed over the Brithiac, and many bitterly repented of their journey, but there was now no returning. Therefore, in new lands they went back to their old life as best they could. And they dwelt in free homesteads in the woods of Taleth Dernin, beyond Taglin, and some wandered far into the realm of Nagathrond. But there were many who loved the Lady Haleth, and wished to go whither she would, and dwell under her rule. And these she led into the forest of Brethil, between Taglin and Sirion. Thither, in the evil days that followed, many of her scattered folk returned. Now Brethel was claimed as part of his realm by King Thingol, though it was not within the girdle of Melian, and he would have denied it to Haleth. But Felagund, who had the friendship of Thingol, hearing of all that had befallen the people of Haleth, obtained this grace for her, that she should dwell free in Brethel, upon the condition only that her people should guard the crossings of Taglin against all enemies of the Eldar, and allow no orcs to enter their woods. To this Haleth answered, Where are Haldad my father, and Haldar my brother? If the king of Doriath fears a friendship between Haleth and those who have devoured her kin, then the thoughts of the Eldar are strange to men. And Haleth dwelt in Brethel until she died. And her people raised a, great, a green mound over her in the heights of the forest, Tur Haritha, the Lady Barrow, Haden Arwen in the Sindarin tongue. In this way it came to pass that the Adain dwelt in the lands of the Eldar, some here, some there, some wandering, some settled in kindreds or small peoples, and the most part of them soon learned the grey elven tongue, both as a common speech among themselves and because many were eager to learn the lore of the elves. But after a time the elf kings, seeing that it was not good for elves and men to dwell mingled together without order, and that men needed lords of their own kind, set regions apart where men could live on their own lives, and appointed chieftains to hold these lands freely. They were the allies of the Eldar in war, but marched under their own leaders. Yet many of the Adain had delight in the friendship of the elves, and dwelt among them for so long as they had leave, and the young men often took service for a time in the hosts of the kings. Now Hadar Lorendal, son of Hathal, son of Megor, son of Malak Aradan, entered the household of Fingolfin in his youth, and was loved by the king. Fingolfin therefore gave to him the lordship of Dar Loman, and into that land he gathered most of the people of his kin, and became the mightiest of the chieftains of the Adain. In his house only the elven tongue was spoken, but their own speech was not forgotten, and from it came the common tongue of Numenor. But in Dorthanian the lordship of the people of Beor and the country of Ladros was given to Boromir, son of Boron, who was the grandson of Beor the Old. The sons of Hadar were Galdor and Gundor, and the sons of Galdor were Hurin and Huar, and the son of Hurin was Turin, the bane of Glaurung, and the son of Huar was Tuar, father of Erendil the Blessed. The son of Boromir was Bregor, whose sons were Bregolas and Barahir, and the sons of Bregolas were Baragund and Belagund. The daughter of Baragund was Morwen, the mother of Turin, and the daughter of Belagund was Rien, the mother of Tuor. But the son of Barahir was Baron One-Handed, who won the love of Luthien Thingol's daughter and returned from the dead. From them came Elwing, the wife of Arendel, and all the kings of Numenor after. All these were caught in the net of the doom of the Noldor, 
and they did great deeds which the Eldar remembered still among the histories of the kings of old. And in those days the strength of men was added to the power of the Noldor, and their hope was high, and Morgoth was straitly enclosed. For the people of Hador, being hardy to endure cold and long wandering, feared not at times to go far into the north and there keep watch upon the movements of the enemy. The men of the three houses throve and multiplied, but greatest among them was the house of Hador Goldenhead, peer of the elven lords. His people were of great strength and stature, ready in mind, bold and steadfast, quick to anger and to laughter, mighty among the children of Iluvatar and the youth of mankind. Yellow-haired they were for the most part, and blue-eyed, but not so with Turin, whose mother was Morwen of the house of Beor. The men of that house were dark or brown of hair, with gray eyes, and of all men they were most like to the Noldor and most loved by them, for they were eager of mind, cunning-handed, swift in understanding, long in memory, and they were moved sooner to pity than to laughter. Like to them were the woodland folk of Haleth, but they were of lesser stature and less eager for lore. They used few words and did not love great concourse of men, and many among them delighted in solitude, wandering free in the green woods, while the wonder of the lands of the Eldar was new upon them. But in the realm of the Wests, their time was brief and their days unhappy. The years of the Adain were lengthened, according to the reckoning of men, after their coming to Beleriand. But at last, Bayor the Old died when he had lived three and ninety years, for four and forty of which he had served King Felagund. And when he lay dead, of no wound or grief, but stricken by age, the Eldar saw for the first time the swift waning of the life of men and the death of weariness, which they knew not in themselves, and they grieved greatly for the loss of their friends. But Beor, at the last, had relinquished his life willingly and passed in peace, and the Eldar wondered much at the strange fate of men, for in all their lore there was no account of it, and its end was hidden from them. Nonetheless, the Adain of old learned swiftly of the Eldar all such art and knowledge as they could receive, and their sons increased in wisdom and skill, until they far surpassed all others of mankind, who dwelt still east of the mountains and had not seen the Eldar, nor looked upon the faces that had beheld the light of Valinor. <laughs> Okay, so in summary, Morgoth attacks the Haladin people, who are ill-equipped to muster their strength against an assault. Haldad, their chief, and his son, are, Haldar, are slain. His daughter, Haleth, leads the Haladin against the orcs, but refuses the offer of Caranthir to dwell under his protection. The Haladin continue westward and make their home in the forests of Brethil. The elf king, see that men need their own leadership and appoint chieftains, though they continue to enjoy friendship. Three houses of men emerge. The people of Hador Lorendal, who develop the common tongue of Numenor, the Haladin and the people of Beor. Oh, those are, those are two others. The Haladin and finally the people of Beor. The men grow strong and add their strength to that of the elves. They become intertwined with the doom of the Noldor. Beor dies of old age, and the elves ponder the strange fate of men and mourn their lost friends. Tell me, who is who is Caranthir? Who is that guy again? I am going to refrain from speaking until I know for sure, but I think he is one of the sons of... Which one's the son I'm getting of? him confused with... Uh... Feanor. He's one of the sons of Feanor. Oh, okay. he's, one of, he's one of the seven sons. Oh, the most quick to anger. The so, harshest of the brothers and the most Carin, quick to anger. I think Carinthin and Kurufin. Car, Carinthir and Kurufin are kind of up in that northeast area. 
by the mountains. Gotcha. Which is why they encountered them. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I'm getting him confused with Gandalf. What's Gandalf's name? Mith- Mithrandir. Mithrandir. Oh, they because they rhyme, obviously. Mm. He he goes by other names as well. Um, one beginning with an O. Olorin. Olorin. Oh, is that it? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. So, so Aaron, this is... Aaron <clears throat> looks kindly upon men and and uh, you know offers recompense and offers protection. Um, that gives me a new side to Karen Thier. Yeah, that I didn't see before. Hmm. It, it, you kind of, I feel like with all the sons of Feanor, they all kind of, you just see them all as hot headed and crazy. You know, mm-hmm. they do, they do valiant things from time to time, and they're not like just pure evil or anything like that. They, but they have that Achilles heel in them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, something I find interesting in this reading. Now that we're hearing more about men who die, I mean, that's kind of yeah. at the end here. We hear about that, right? Bayor just dies of old age. And um, something I realized while I was reading this is that we're just going to hear tons of names of men because, <laughs> because the elves are the same ones that we've heard from the beginning of the story. <laughs> true. But the men are going to like, we're going to hear about their great, great, great grandchildren soon. Yeah. But it's still the same elves, you know. Are there ever any elf babies? Uh, well, I know, I know for a fact, um, one, one character from the Lord of the Rings isn't alive yet. Cause they have brothers El- Elrond. and sisters. Elrond okay. isn't Elrond's, there yet. He's, he's not there yet. There's but, gotta be babies. Yeah. They but do they, do they have like a, the same kind of life cycle as man or I don't know. maybe, maybe oh, yeah. their are adolescence there, their is like 600 are, years. Yeah. Their teenagers are like. Hundred year old. Maybe aren't there's a teenager, and that's why I think they they reach adulthood when they hit a hundred, at least according to the One Ring um, game. Hmm. You choose an elf, like I think it it they they hit adolescence, adulthood at a hundred. Hmm. So yeah, maybe and then maybe the hobbits would be not that <laughs> old because um, Bilbo has his eleventy first. Right? Isn't that right? He's really old, but their coming of age is 33. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 So that's what? A little that's older than like 18. Yeah. yeah. A little older than men. Yeah. Men yeah. are just, just go to, go to the dust really quickly. Although it does say it's kind of like, um, go to the dust or drown themselves. I mean, what the, f- what's going on there? Like, it's just like, oh, yeah. So, they were okay, so you're talking about, they just cast themselves in the river. It's like so depressing. Yeah. Because it's, uh, what, Hal- not Haleth, but Haleth's dad, Haldad. Yeah, Haldad. Oh, you yeah. remember it, Haldad. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, they, yeah, like, they were just throwing themselves in the water because what was it? What was he died and name? then the son died. Yeah. Haldar. Oh, I thought it was Halbrad. Ha- oh, th- that's from, <laughs> that's, that's from Halbrand. Halbrand? Hal- no, Halbrad. From, yeah. <laughs> Hal bro, Hal Chad. <laughs> <laughs> From uh, it's kind of funny because <laughs> rings of these power. names, these names are not that. Um... <laughs> Dissimilar. We'll call him. We'll call They're him so Hal Dad because he's so the father. Similar. We'll have Hal Mum. She's the mum. Yeah. Hal, Hal bro. Hal yeah. bro. Hal daughter. <laughs> well, yeah, it's Hal funny. It's like the parents have a really interesting. F- name for their yeah. first child and then they lose all yeah. creativity after that so and this one can be called one. how non-binary <laughs> oh my gosh you gotta stop with this okay um i have a new name for myself which i'm not i'm not even going to change my printed name here um, oh yeah what what'd you find I, there's a there's a man named bregolas bregolas he's like that means oh, even yeah. closer i laughed when i saw it He's even closer oh, to my that's name funny. than Legolas. So for those watching on our YouTube channel, oh yeah, good point. It is. We have names listed which are always puns and they change from time to time. I think yours yours changed a lot, but I oh, think Oh yeah, maybe you guys have re- kept the same. I've just kept it because I've heard I've seen people like make fun of me with this Danrod name, you know, in the mm. chat. Wait, who makes fun of you? Oh, people that either like the jokes or don't like the jokes. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's fine. 
I like your jokes. Yeah, I know. I have, I have therapy. People, are, are you, people do are like YouTube, your jokes. Uh, I don't laugh yeah. at your jokes, but I appreciate them. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the most they'll get out of me is, that's too funny. Yeah, that's but I won't laugh. <laughs> that is funny. I've made, yeah. you, I've made you chortle before. Pe- people Greg. who don't laugh at your jokes, they say, that's so funny. Yeah. Or something, <laughs> yes, that's so funny. Or you get the... <laughs> it's just like a pity exhale. All right, All right back to the, the story. I, so I, I, I was going to say this, and then we got okay. on track. But we were talking about the age of men and how how they develop and everything. And this is kind of like in the Old Testament, where the figures kind of at the beginning of Genesis live for like a thousand years and nine hundred years, and yeah. they kind of start dwindling in age. But it does say Bayer the old died when he was three hundred and nine uh, three. <laughs> No, wait, 93. No, 93. Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, it's yeah, 3 I think and it's just 90 Tolkien years. being British. Yeah, yeah it's 3 and 90. People. Yeah. Okay, it's not Does that, that old. Does that mean 93 or 390? I think no, it means 93. 93. That's 93. But that's not that old. I thought he would have lived a little older than that. They are the old. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they don't have Obamacare no, or uh, whatever yeah. it is oh, nowadays, man. Medicaid. So they... <laughs> They're not going to live that old, I, are they? To be what did you want to say about that, Bregolas? Well, just that. Well, that's something we've discussed before too. But this, um, the 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 mystery of death. You know, I love this. this the whole gift of Iluvatar. Page one forty. The gift of Iluvatar. Right. Um, this is the fir- the fir- this, uh, the Eldar saw for the first time the swift waning of the life of men, and the death of weariness, which they which they knew not in themselves. And they grieved greatly for the loss of their friends. But this is an interesting little bit too. Bayor at the last had relinquished his life willingly and passed in peace. There is something interesting in that, I think, that mm-hmm. that's kind of like um, the ultimate of the gift of Iluvatar, like dying at the at your like appointed time naturally versus like being, you know, throwing yourself into the river or whatever else happened to all these people. Yeah, it makes sense. A peaceful death. Peace. Isn't that what we all want? We want a peaceful death. Yeah. You hear about people, I don't know if you've heard this, but um, older people who are really close to death who, or there's a lot more deaths after the holidays. Hmm. There'll be like a, an uptick in deaths by old age. And they think it's because, you know, they hold on for that last time together with family i like i just they heard wait wait you for mean that it moment. isn't just because they're a bit older because <laughs> <laughs> they're a week older yeah no that i'm talking about statistical like um charting of when people die and there's an uptick in after the holidays um, a woman I, for old age a, yep a woman i know from my from my parents from my parish um her husband passed away in january and um she she told me I, I got to go to his funeral it was really beautiful i didn't really know him very well but i knew her and i know her and um she told me the story and it was it was just like incredible they were they had dinner after dinner they were just playing cards just the two of them and she dealt the cards and was looking at her hand and uh, he just died right there, like sitting in the wow. chair. Like she just looked down at her hand and and said like, hey, it's your turn and looked up and he he had just passed. He probably had a and, royal flush. Or, <laughs> sorry, you can edit that out. I mean, like. <laughs> All right, I'm done. See you later, guys. Okay. Bye, <laughs> Bye but, No, but there was something about that that was like she was, she, it, it's, it's sad, right? It's obviously sad to lose someone you, especially I think they were married for like 50 years or something, you know, but I think for her, there, she had this gratitude that it, it like, she just got to spend her last moments enjoying things that they do together. Well, it's like such know. a peaceful death. Like it's, yeah. it's not dying violently or by an accident. It's just, you're playing cards and yeah. um, you wouldn't have to, like if you were the spouse of that person, you wouldn't have to worry. Like, did they die in pain? <clears throat> as opposed to like if you were away from them like you're out shopping right. you came back and you found them dead it would be like yeah yeah 
Um, I have one other thing. We're kind of jumping around this reading all over the place, but yeah, you're starting at the very end. So what what do you like from the <laughs> second page from the end? Second, oh, that's exactly we'll go backwards. backwards. One forty eight. Um, the the first full paragraph on that, the top, sons of sons of Hador. The genealogy. That whole paragraph, it's just the genealogy, right? Yeah. But there's mm. so many little details that are it's telling us what's happening in the future of the story. So, for example, it says, Turin, the bane of Glaurung. Isn't yeah. Glaurung the, the, dra- the drake or whatever? Yep. Right? We've heard about him already. So we know that he's going to kill this dragon at some point. We just haven't heard about that yet. And then same, like we hear about Baron One Hand, who won the love yeah. of Luthien and returned from the dead. Yeah. We're just getting these so little, cool. little bits, you know? Or, um, oh, hold on one second. I got to get it. Yeah, I mean, the genealogy part I thought was pretty cool. At first, I was like, where where is this going? Why are we so deep in genealogy? But then when it started to explain, like, Bane of Glaurung, um, Arendil the Blessed, like, all of these names are cool, especially when they start to get titles. And then, of course, we hear about the people who we're going to hear about later, Beren and Luthien. So cool. I can't wait for that. <clears throat> to be completely frank, I forgot that these were men. Um, I thought they were elves. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> when yeah. I read it um, the, the first and second time through. It just like you hear all these names and right. it's hard not to keep them it straight. But yeah, it's interesting. These are These are of the race of men. So that's cool. We get to follow some manly men's. Yeah. Um so I I would love to focus on Haleth Hal daughter Hal sis Hal girl. She becomes a chieftain. Yeah. Isn't that what the, and not a chieftainess. I thought that was interesting. Um yeah. so uh so there's not this kind of do you think there's a patriarchy in Silmarillion? Um, no, but no, like because you English, have in English history, we hear we like growing up as a kid, I would hear about these great warrior women from Roman times. Um, so like Bodicea was a really well known. I think she came to England and conquered part of it. I don't know, but Did she, she invent chari- Bodices? Maybe she was a chariot rider. She led armies. She was a certified, you know, BA. Um, and that was, like, pretty normal. So I, I imagine in my mind that um, Tolkien, Lewis, all of these people would have been fili- familiar with these ancient female warriors, which were in Nordic religion too. Religion, yeah. sorry, culture. So and I think he's like- just using that like this is just you know when the occasion arrives with the right kind of person that's right it happens like who who's that woman that kicks butt in the mandalorian oh yeah cara dune she was was she was she kicked out of episode one yes i mean season one yeah that's cara dune cara that's her name cara dune yeah what's pretty sure that's her real name no, 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 no. That's her. What? That's that's the Mandalorian character is called Cara Dune. Okay, so she's she's an example of like when the when the situation arises or like circumstances arise, it's like normally the men are the chiefs and the leaders and the warriors, but then you have a Haleth come along. Yeah, it's and... like undercover billionaire Elaine. Oh, what an obscure! <laughs> who's gonna Who's gonna know what that is besides well, me? Who, who's gonna know who Bodicea is it's besides historians? Like we're we're we're, we're throwing it out there, so someone's gonna be like, "Oh, I know Bodicea." Someone else is like, "Oh yeah, Elaine, she is terrifying." So we're, we're just we're just broadening the perspective of the audience. Yeah, it's true. Yep, <laughs> that's true. It's like uh, the squirrel from SpongeBob SquarePants. Who's See, I don't know that one. I and don't she know does that karate. One. Yeah, and someone Sandy. else is going. Sandy Cheeks. I know Sandy Cheeks. Sandy Cheeks. I've she's, got a tattoo of BA. Sandy Cheeks on my, my Sandy bicep. Cheeks. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. 
But what's interesting is she's the chieftain, and then um, after she, well, she um, the, the headship afterwards passed to Haldan. So it continues oh, a, upon the right the male leadership, but it's not opposed to like the occasion of a woman rising up, who's you know, um, is a strong. It even uses the word like has great strength. But Haldar dies. That's why she becomes. In charge. No, uh, oh, pass, yeah, pass to Haldan or Halbro, her bro. Yeah. Halbro. Wait, where, where does it say that? Uh, <clears throat> the bottom paragraph on 146. 146. Also, for those listening, Greg <laughs> has disappeared completely. We don't know where he is. He's gone. I, I booted him off because he wasn't being funny enough. Oh, okay. Well, let him back on if he can provide a good joke. All right, I'll wait till he texts me a good joke. Um, son of Haldar. So Haldar is the one who died. Haldar has a son. Halith remained. Okay. All yeah, right. Here's think, how you can remember it. Hal Dan, like a like a man. Like, like you, your name is Dan. Yeah. And you're the bro. Your dad. Wait, that doesn't make no, sense. No, no, no. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Because Haldar is her brother, yeah, and he's right. dead. Dar. But Haldar had a son, Haldan. Y- you're right. And and but Haleth uh, passes on her leadership to Haldan. Haldan. Her, but that's just succession. Her nephew. Sure, her nephew. Yeah. Yeah. So there's Haldad, Haldar, and Haldan. So they just don't. <laughs> they're like. <laughs> they it's a naming out of convention. It, it's fine. It's okay. Oh, no, it's not. You know, do you get those families that all they name their kids like all with the same letter or or they spell the end yeah. of the kid's name all the same. Yep. Um I know a family who's um they would name their kids first name, first letter of the alphabet, second name, second letter of the alphabet. And I think that's they a good way because you just most need of the way through the alphabet. Then. Yeah. 13 kids. They and might have the gone all kid, way all the way through. Well, yeah, because at the end you just give them two middle names. If you're running, if you're like, well, you know what, I'm oh, I'm 50 years old, yeah. I'm probably not gonna have any more kids. <laughs> but this is the last one. She's getting yep. three middle names: <laughs> Yovana, Xavier, <laughs> Zippers. <laughs> I couldn't think of a Z name. <laughs> oh, when Greg's not here, we go off the rails. What are we talking about right now? Um, well, this is all interesting. I mean, I'm excited for all these new characters that were um, introduced, and it basically gave a window into the upcoming story. So it's getting really exciting. Yeah, a couple more readings until my favorite section with Baron and Luthien. I like the last thing before we sign off here today. Um, so then it's, it's this third chap, third paragraph at the end from the end that is uh the men of the three houses i love i love that he chose throve he didn't say they thrived um, yeah and multiplies yeah they throve and multiplied um but then it goes on to explain the different kind of temperaments of these yes. houses you know and i was wondering and maybe you know the answer to this we could look it up to the blonde hair blue dyed people are they gonna end up being descendants of um the real here yeah yeah thank you sorry yeah that's yeah. what i was wondering um they, they all just look like my dad like golden locks blue hair <laughs> my dad had like the mullet all the way down to his shoulders and really thick blonde hair i mean if we yeah, they up- might be hey dar golden head the, the Ro, 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 Hiram. And then we hear about, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear just as the last thing who you identify with. So we got the, um, the Hador Golden Head people. Great strength and stature, bold, steadfast, quick to anger and laughter. They sound like cholerics. Yeah, cholerics or sanguines, you know, that's what I thought, but probably better choleric, yeah. And then the second ones are like more choleric, melancholic types. Darker brown hair, gray eyes. Um, 
Eager of mind, cunning handed, swift in understanding. Yeah, they're like amenable, agreeable. Long in memory, that's a very melancholic trait. That's um, true. Move sooner to pity than laughter, which could also be a that's so true. Trait. But then the last ones I think fit melancholy as well because they're like um they don't talk much. <laughs> Um, they have fewer words and they're a bit more reclusive. Mm, um, they're, they like their solitude. I think you're right. So I just, I, I don't know. La so, I mean, I'm quick, I'm quick to laughter. I'm not quick to anger. That's the problem. I'm quick to anger, actually. Huh. Did you know that about me? Uh, ever yeah. since I had kids. No, it was before that. Okay, ever since I was born. <laughs> it's definitely before that. I, I do remember the, the frustration. I should have a small wick. Well, interesting. So uh, any last words before we wrap up? Nope. That's great. Cool. Any knock-knock jokes? Nope. Here, let's start a knock-knock joke, and we'll, we'll have the finish, the end of it be in the next episode. Okay. Okay, ready? Wait, how far, how deep are we going into this knock knock? Room? Knock knock. Who's there? If you like what you hear, go ahead and rate us three Silmarils out of three. Follow us everywhere at Before the Fellowship and join the discussion on Discord. The link is in the description. Send any comments or questions to Before the Fellowship at gmail.com and join us next week as we read the greatest story you've never heard The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien.